Welcome to Beat Source Tech. My name is Mojax, and today I'm going to attempt to answer the question which I am asked more than any other, and that is, which MacBook should I buy for DJing? Okay, firstly, let's address the elephant in the room. Didn't I switch to an XMG Windows laptop for DJing a while back? Well, indeed I did, and it served me very well for a long time. It's a great laptop, but their line of DJ laptops has now ended, and here is the statement from their website explaining why. That's pretty interesting stuff. They say it is, quote, impossible for us, and as a matter of fact for every other manufacturer, to release a laptop and genuinely call it audio optimised at this point. Now, I don't know what's caused that state of affairs, but I'm assuming there's something going on with the most recent generations of Intel's architecture, because I haven't seen anyone complaining about the audio performance of Apple's recent machines, which are all based on Apple's own SOCs, or systems on a chip, the M1, M2, and now the M3s. There are other reasons that this is a MacBook buyer's guide and not a wider guide to include Windows laptops. Firstly, the overwhelming majority of DJs I know in real life are using MacBooks. I know there are plenty of Windows using DJs out there, but they just aren't in my circles aside from a couple of exceptions. And secondly, making such a guide would simply be impossible. There are thousands of Windows laptops on the market, only one of which I've tested, and therefore any guide which included Windows would just be me guessing at stuff. With Macs, it's much easier for me to make confident recommendations based on what I own myself. The first Apple Silicon machine I bought was this 2020 Mac Mini, which I bought to use for DJing in the studio. It features a first generation M1 chip and is stock aside from two things, the RAM and the SSD size. Apple's SOCs don't have RAM in the traditional sense, they have what's called unified memory instead. It does largely the same job and is still volatile memory, but the way it works is more tightly integrated into the overall system. After watching a lot of reviews of M1 machines, I decided to go for 16 gigabytes of unified memory over the standard 8 gigabytes, and I'm going to say I think that's an essential upgrade whichever Mac you buy. 8 gigabytes might actually do the job for you at least to start with, but the thing to remember is that there's no way to add more memory after the fact with these modern Macs. What you spec in the first instance is what you have in there forever, and you don't know what kind of demands DJ software might put on the machine in the future. So I'd always advise playing it safe and going going for at least 16 gigabytes. In the same vein, I also went for a 512 SSD over the stock 256 gigabytes. Although storage is potentially less of an issue, as you can always use external drives, just like with the memory, you aren't able to upgrade the internal SSD later on. And although these days I use BeatSource and BeatPort streaming a lot, so my music library isn't as large as it once was, I still have around 200 gigabytes of local files. Add on the operating system and some apps, and that would leave me with an almost full drive if I'd chosen the base storage. This this is even more pertinent with a DJ laptop of course, where having external drives hanging off it is an extra thing to go wrong in the booth. And it's worth noting that the internal drives in these Macs are blisteringly fast, and so buying an equally snappy external equivalent won't be cheap later on either. Having now used that M1 Mini for a couple of years, I have drawn this conclusion that even this first generation of M-series chips eats DJ software for breakfast. Serato stems on the fly, no problem. Rekordbox, Traktor, Algorithm DJ, all good. And Virtual DJ's Stems 2.0 works great with an M1. So when we come to look at the current MacBook offerings from Apple, you can't actually buy an M1 anymore with one exception, which we'll get to. The lineup consists of M2s and, as of last week, the new M3s, along with their Pro and Max variations. These all promise higher performance than the M1s, although there are questions about how much of a jump there is between the M2 and M3, but I'm not going to get into that. And indeed, if you're looking for a laptop for other tasks, video editing, development, extremely heavy music production, then you should go and watch and read a bunch of reviews to work out which model has the benchmarks that you require. There is a whole section of the specs, the number of CPU and GPU cores, which I won't even address in this video because for regular audio DJing it is largely irrelevant. But I can tell you, based on my experience with that Mac Mini of mine, that every model Apple sell today will handle your DJ software without any fuss whatsoever. Other quick hardware notes, Apple's trackpads have always rocked and the current generation are superb, as are the keyboards. There were a few years when Apple had their butterfly keyboards which were actually terrible but those days are gone and they're back to being excellent now. I use KB covers to protect mine anyway and I also use these clear cases to both protect the laptop and allow me to sticker it up without fear of leaving any mess behind. 
One more thing before we start checking out specific models. The power efficiency and therefore battery life of Apple Silicon MacBooks is absolutely wild. With my 14 inch MacBook Pro, if I'm starting a set with the battery fully charged and that set is three hours long or less, I don't bother plugging the charger in. And that's with zero power mitigations, Wi-Fi is on for streaming, screen brightness is up high, all of that. With all of the Intel MacBooks I've owned in the past, that kind of battery life would have been pure fantasy. All right, so now we're looking at the Apple website. Now, this is the US version of the Apple site because most of you watching this are in the US, but of course there are local versions with the correct pricing for your territory, but this will still be good for comparison purposes so you get an idea of what costs what within the lineup. Now, when we're looking at MacBooks now, there are two varieties. There's the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. There used to be another version of the MacBook Pro, the 13, but that's now gone. That was the touch bar one. That's disappeared. We have 14s and 16s there. MacBook Airs, there are 13s and 15s. Now, the first one I'm going to say you should definitely avoid is this one. The 13-inch MacBook Air with the M1 chip. It's the most affordable Mac laptop indeed, and I think it just exists to be a $1,000 laptop. That's the headline price. It's a $999 MacBook that Apple can have in their lineup. And there's one big problem with it, and that is that it doesn't have what I think is a fantastic feature, which Apple had for the longest time, then USB-C came along and they dropped it and now it's back, and that is MagSafe. So with MagSafe, you get the magnetic power adapter that kind of clips in and out. It, if it gets yanked out, it's not gonna take the laptop off the table and destroy the laptop and it won't destroy the power supply. This one only does have regular USBs for power. So you can power any of these current Macs via USB, which is great. Like if you get stuck and you've not got your MagSafe, then that's brilliant. You can just plug in any USB-C power adapter and plug them in and charge them directly via USB. But this one doesn't have the MagSafe as well. So it only has two USB slash Thunderbolt ports. So if you want to run it off the wall power, you're gonna only have one port left. And that, for most DJs, I think is just a kind of a risky step. You might only use a controller for DJing, but there will be some time when you're gonna to need to plug in a USB stick or an external drive or something else to your computer. And if you're plugged into mains power, you're not only gonna have one USB available to you. So I don't think it's great from that point of view. Also, it's only $100 cheaper than the more recent M2 MacBook 13 inch MacBook Air. So it's a hundred dollars difference you're getting a more up-to-date cpu gpu combo and you get magsafe on there so if we select through to that one again look at the pictures on here and i don't think the actual spec of these ports is any problem you know all of these are ports are plenty fast enough for dj purposes the usb slash thunderbolts again if you're doing other stuff with the machine you might want to look at the base specs of those but for this look you've got the magsafe and you've got two usbs and I think that is just a safer option. For me, that is absolutely worth $100 just for the MagSafe alone. Absolutely it is. Now, if we look at my recommendation of going for the 16 gig of unified memory, that's going to bump this up from $1,100 to $1,300. And I think most DJs would be more better served with 512 gigs of storage instead of the 256. So they were at $1,500. Now, all of these computers are expensive, right? Let's be very clear. Macs are not a cheap option. Even the lower end ones, you know, the MacBook Airs, etc., they're still very expensive. 1500 bucks for a computer is a lot. But I would say to you that in my experience, up to now, and I've been using Macs since like 2007, I've got around five years of use from every single MacBook that I've ever owned. And I'm still using one. Like in the lab right now, I also have an older Mac Mini from 2012, which is still working. It's not you know, not up to the job of working with Serato stems or whatever, but it's still working. I'm still using it for various tasks. And that computer is now 11 years old. So I don't think that this is a crazy price to spend for a professional piece of kit to be used in the DJ booth. I don't think you need to spend thousands and thousands. I think up to around 2000 is, is a pretty reasonable amount. I mean, if you went for this one, $1,500, break that down over five years, that's $300 a year for your laptop. And that, for most DJs who are looking at a laptop like this, that's the core of your DJ setup. I think that's a pretty reasonable price. I don't really have a problem with that at all. So, yeah, $1,500 is pretty good for that MacBook Air. They also do a larger 15-inch one if you want a larger display. 
And one thing I will say, the displays on all of these are really good. The MacBook Pro displays are better still, but they're all Retina displays, really high quality, nice high resolution. You can really see all the detail of what's going on. But yeah, the 15 inch, you're going to add on basically a couple of hundred extra bucks. So if you were to go for a 15 inch with the same kind of specs, and again, we can look at the different options. So this one has the same specs across the board, apart from it has a 512 SSD as standard. Select that one. Add on the 16 gig of memory. And we're looking at $1,700. So it's $200 extra to go for the bigger 15 inch display. So the MacBook Airs look like a really good option. And I would agree that in general, they kind of are. And I know a lot of DJs who use MacBook Airs and have great results with them. There's one thing that gives me pause about the idea of buying a MacBook Air, and that is that all of the MacBook Airs are passively cool. They don't have fans in them. Now, the thermal performance of all of these computers is generally very good, and yeah, for DJing, you do kind of have power to spare, but DJs are very often performing in very high temperature environments, so sweaty, hot nightclubs or at pool parties in the blazing sun, that kind of thing. And what will happen, it's not so much the danger that the computer will overheat with these M-series processors, it's more the case that performance might get throttled if the machine starts to get really hot. And so that's one reason that I personally would generally stick to the MacBook Pro. If you are a MacBook Air user, let us know how your experiences have been when it comes to temperature with your laptop, because I'd be very interested to know. I haven't heard it being a problem from people I'm, a, you know, that I know who have MacBook Airs, but for me, it is a bit more money for a pro. But I do think if you're wanting to be extra cautious about the idea of working in hot environments as DJs do, then perhaps the pro might be a better option. There are two sizes of these. Again, you know, you go to the 16-inch. Uh, over the 14 inch I have a 14 inch which I will tell you more about later on but I went for the 14 it's no bigger than a typical 13 inch laptop and that's the thing it's very portable it's very compact not too chunky not too heavy but it has a really nice 14 inch display these all have the liquid retina XDR display the display quality is fantastic not really a consideration that much for DJing but you get what I'm saying like it's 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 one of those things where having a nice screen to look at is always nice. But the thing is, with these, you've got the M3 MacBook Pros. And this is where the lineup, it's kind of simplified now. They've done away with the 13, but it's also a little bit more complicated. You have two laptops that are basically in the same body. So the same dimensions, the same size, but there are some differences in ports. So if you go for the 14-inch M3 MacBook Pro, then you can see we have the 8-core CPU, 10 core GPU. Let's select that one. Go for the 16 gig of memory, 512 storage. And of course, if you want more storage, you can bump that up. You know, a terabyte is another $200. Two terabytes adds $600 onto the base price. That's a lot for internal storage. Don't get me wrong. Like, that's an awful lot of money. I think for most people, 512 or a terabyte is going to be the sweet spot. If you're just an audio DJ, then you know, if your library is much bigger than that, then perhaps you need to look at your library management before you look at getting for a giant, you know, SSD. But yeah, for me, not too much of an issue. But this one, it does have the traditional now 14 inch pro body. They've all got really nice speakers. That's something I sort of forgot to mention as well. The MacBook Airs and the MacBook Pros, really nice speakers built in when you're prepping tracks on your laptop. You don't need to worry about external speakers. They sound good. Uh, but this one has... An SD card slot, not much use for most DJs. An HDMI port, not much use for most DJs. It does have the MagSafe, and it only has two USB slash Thunderbolt ports. Now, that is enough, say, for most people. For myself DJing, most of the time, when I'm out at gigs, that is enough. I've got one for my phase and one going to the mixer because I'm using DVS with turntables. And so, for me, that's generally enough. But there will be occasions and some DJ setups where you might want another usb slash thunderbolt port and to do that you're going to have to jump up to the m3 pro and that starts at two thousand dollars so again the headline price now it's going up it's starting to get high right so two thousand dollars but with this one 
you're getting a more powerful chip, which is great, the M3 Pro. As I say, not necessary for DJing, but always nice to have. 18 gig of memory as standard. So not even 16, you're getting 18 as standard. And it's coming with that 512 SSD. So in many respects for me, that is kind of the sweet spot here is that $2,000 M3 Pro because you're getting all of that and you are getting on the other side an extra USB slash Thunderbolt port. So I think that's kind of, as I say, in the M in the MacBook Pro 14-inch line, for me, that's kind of the sweet spot. If we just, again, look at the specs on the two, you're looking at for the 512 add up so it's 17.99 for that one on the left with the the 16 gig of unified memory this one you're getting the 18 gig of unified memory a more powerful chip and you're getting that extra usb port again you might not need that extra port right now but you might in the future so for me that 200 bucks I think that's a pretty good value addition. Now, of course, you can go crazy with these. You can go up to the 14-core CPU, 30-core GPU, 36 gig of memory, 3,000. I know DJs, and I've already seen some posting since these M3s dropped, you know, on their Twitter about how they've ordered a maxed out M3 MacBook Pro. And, and I get that, right? If you are doing it as a write-off or whatever, or if it's just something you need in your life, or you just want to have the very best, then, of course... There's nothing wrong with spending that extra and going for an absolutely baller MacBook Pro. But I am here to tell you, as part of this guide, you don't need to do that. It's not necessary. Any of these, I would say, stick the 16 gig of memory in there, get the SSD size that you want. They're going to serve you incredibly well for a long time to come when it comes to your DJ performance. Now, of course, you've got the 16-inch MacBook Pros as well. If you want that larger display and there might be Many good reasons why you want that larger display. Maybe you work with your laptop further away from you. Maybe your eyesight is not maybe 100% on point and you want that bigger screen or you just enjoy having a bigger screen. That's all fine. But these do start at a real premium when it comes to pricing because they are only available as pros. Uh, but this one, so you're looking at $2,500. I would say though, from my experience with a 14 inch pro, it's big enough. In my usage, it's plenty big enough. I'm very happy with that 14. And so let's take a look now at my MacBook Pro. What did I buy? I actually bought one earlier this year and I did not buy an M2 MacBook Pro. I didn't buy the last generation because what I did was I went to the Apple refurbished store and I bought an M1 Pro MacBook Pro for quite a significant saving off the original pricing it was around three to four hundred dollars off and i get i was doing this research myself at the time i was looking at the pricing and i was looking at the performance of the m1 pro versus the m2 pro and i was like actually no i i don't need it the m1 pro is absolutely fine for me and it is the m1 is still absolutely you know taking names it's kicking butt and it's taking names when it comes to serato stems virtual dj tractor record box all of that it's absolutely doing it the reason I bought uh, an M-series chip MacBook Pro was because I needed the extra video editing performance because I also edit video on the road with my laptop. So that's why the XMG Windows machine, it just didn't have any graphics grunt at all. It wasn't up to the job. So I had to go for a MacBook Pro for that. But as a DJ machine, which is I'm also using it as my primary DJ machine, then it's absolutely fantastic. So it's definitely worth taking a look at the refurbished store now the stock on this will change from day to day from week to week it might be something you have to take your time and just be patient with now i'm going to say again we have these 13.3 inch macbook pro so look at this i mean this might look like a bit of a bargain here we've got this 13 inch touch bar macbook pro but the reason i didn't really want to make this video before was again these 13.3 inch MacBook Pros were a bit lacking when it came to ports. So here we have one again with no MagSafe and only two USBs. So again, you're running power via USB. You don't have the MagSafe. You've only effectively got one port. So, you know, if that's fine for you, if you're sure that's fine for you, this is probably a pretty good machine. You know, it's only got the eight gig of memory and that's the thing. All of these you'll have to click through and see 
what memory it's got and everything else. But if we look at, let's say this one, this is the last generation 14 inch MacBook Pro M2 Pro, 10 core GPU, 16 core GPU, uh, CPU. This has got the 16 gig unified memory. It's got the 512 SSD. And for DJ use, that's going to do you just as well as this one over here. So the 14 inch, that one is a M2 Pro chip. Let's go for the equivalent. So we get the same amount of ports. So we've got the uh, M3 Pro. Select that one. And let's go for the, so it's got the 18 gig of memory, 512 SSD. So that's $2,000. This one, 1600. And I would say to you for DJing, that will do you just as well as that one. And that's a $400 saving. Now the thing with, you know, you can buy refurbished Macs from a lot of places. I have only ever bought them from Apple themselves. The savings aren't perhaps quite as big as some other places maybe, but with Apple, you're basically getting a new machine. You can put Apple Care on it. And I've never had, I've bought refurbished iPads, I've bought refurbished MacBooks, I've bought all kinds of machines refurbished from Apple over the years. I've never had one that I felt was anything less than basically just a new laptop or a new computer or a new iPad. So I fully recommend this refurbished store. For me, if I was shopping for a MacBook today for DJing, I would buy this one. And that wasn't pre-planned. I just literally, I've refreshed this tab this morning and there are loads of options there, lots of different things. But literally, that's the first M2 Pro that I've just looked at, 14 inch. You've got the three ports, so three USBs and the MagSafe. You've got the HDMI, you've got the SD card slot. And that's what I did. I bought the same thing. I bought when the M2 was the current chip a few months back, I bought the M1 Pro at a similar kind of saving. And I got the 16 gig and I got a terabyte SSD in there. And I'm very, very happy with that machine. As I say, it absolutely just devours DJ software without thinking twice. It's fantastic. And so I can tell you now, this M2 Pro will also devour DJ software. It will be fantastic for DJing. And to me, that is the best value machine on this Apple website today at the time of making this video in early November 2023. That's what I would say to you. Like, Make sure you're checking out the refurbished store. The other option is if you are a student, you know, if you're officially a student, then there are always good student discounts from Apple. And if you know somebody who's a student, if you have a family member who's in college, then why not hit them up, get them to buy it for you. Apple Care and everything else, the warranty can all be transferred over to somebody else. Yeah, you know, that's not a problem at all. So they can get a fairly sizable discount. It's not the easiest one to get. There is some hoops to jump through and you have to do it from like an official college email address and all that kind of stuff. It's been a long time since I've done that because typically now I will get mine from the refurbished store if I have the option. But yeah, you don't have to pay this headline price all the time, especially now because these chips are just that much more powerful. As I say, everything available on this website today when it comes to MacBooks, I would say is perfectly usable for DJing. The only one I would avoid is that very low-end MacBook Air and if you are DJing in hot environments, I would definitely think about going to the Pro if you possibly can, because just having that extra reassurance of that fan-powered cooling, you know, that active cooling, for me, that's something that I feel a bit more comfortable with. But let us know in the comments if you've been using an M-Series MacBook Air for DJing. Have you experienced problems with heat at all? Does it knock down the performance? Has it caused you any problems? Do let us know that in the comments below. But yeah, for me, that's my guide as of today. If you can afford it, go for the 14-inch MacBook Pro, ideally with the Pro chip, but make sure you're looking on that refurbished store from Apple themselves, because for me, that is the best deal on that website today. I mentioned Apple Care earlier, and I do want to come back to that. I'm not normally a fan of extended warranties, but I do get Apple Care on my Apple devices, and I've generally found it to be good value. It's not a full replacement for dedicated insurance. It won't cover you if the laptop is lost or stolen, for example, but you do get coverage for unlimited cases of accidental damage with a small excess. In the past, you could only get three years of Apple Care coverage, but now you have the option to pay annually and have it covered for as long as you're using the machine. So I am a fan, but check out the various options for yourself and decide if it's right for you.
Before we wrap up, there's one final thing I need to discuss, and that's the reason why, at the time of making this video, buying a brand new M3 MacBook Pro might not actually be a good idea at all, and that's down to the new operating system Mac OS Sonoma. I'm editing this video on the 6th of November 2023, and at this point, Serato DJ Pro is not officially compatible with Sonoma, nor is Recordbox or Engine DJ, although Algorithm DJ and Virtual DJ do appear to be. Even more of an issue is hardware. There's no word from Pioneer DJ about Sonoma compatibility for their kit yet, and it's the same with Rain and numerous other manufacturers. Of course, all of that software, and I'd imagine the hardware too, will be compatible soon enough, but it's just not the case right now. So this is a time when perhaps that refurbished store option might be even better. If you buy a refurb M2 MacBook Pro today, it will be supplied with Sonoma, but there's nothing to stop you installing Ventura on it when it arrives. With Macs, you can always install any version of macOS that the machine came installed with at some point, but that means the latest M3 models, which only just launched, can only run Sonoma, and nothing older. Within a few weeks this will probably be academic anyway, but if you're watching this video near the time of its release and you're shopping for a MacBook today, it's worth keeping in mind. So there you go, my thoughts on the new generation of MacBooks from Apple, along with a couple of ideas about how maybe you could save some money on your next DJ laptop purchase. In the comments this week, tell us what kind of laptop you are using for your DJ performances, be it Windows or Mac, what are the specs of it, would you recommend it to other DJs or would you maybe tell them to steer clear? Thank you for watching this episode of Beat Source Tech. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel and you turn on notifications to make sure you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time.